Hi, my name is Jesse. I'm a filmmaker and I wanted to quickly give you some best practices and advice on how to film yourself by yourself for social media ministry. We're not always going to have a big crew around to help us, but we always want to present ourselves and our message with excellence. So let's explore the levels of excellence through the metaphor of an ice cream sundae. Uh, if you want to jump forward, there's some times on screen to, uh, to help you jump to a section. Uh, but if your video is an ice cream sundae, then the content that you're bringing is definitely the ice cream. Quick side note, I'm not a professional communicator. You can do this better than me. I just know video stuff, so here we go. The first level of excellence is the content. You love Jesus and you know the Bible, so you've got this. Just remember that your audience has a lot of choices of what to watch, so you're going to want to add value to their lives fast. Don't assume that they'll stick around. Your audience wants to be fed or entertained in the first three or four seconds of the video, so make sure that you load the front end of the video with the most important stuff. The fudge is authenticity. And this is a whole lot easier said than done. The main thing to remember is that your content is likely going to be seen by one person at a time holding their phone like they're video chatting with you. Uh, so instead of thinking of, of like thousands of people watching, um, think of one person. Like I literally w picture one person that you know and talk to them. Uh, talk to them as if you're sharing tater tots in a mall food court after you saw that great movie together or um, holding a warm cup of tea in their living room. It's an intimate exchange, so keep it intimate. A part of authenticity is connection. So notice that I've been looking at the camera, which is a little black spot on my phone, instead of at myself on the screen. If you're looking at yourself, you totally disconnect with your audience. The next step for testing authenticity is figuring out if your friends saw this video, would they say that it's really you? Or are you pretending to be someone else? Uh, your audience doesn't want someone else. They don't want who you rehearse to be or who you want to be. They want your personality. As a wise man once said, be yourself. People would rather follow someone who's always real and someone who's always right. If you're communicating to K through 12th graders, there are two extra considerations for authenticity. The first one is that you can communicate yourself, but with higher saturation. So in other words, you can turn yourself up to 11, but uh, don't ever change to a different channel. If they smell falseness in you, they won't trust anything that you're saying. And the second one is that condescending is communicating to your audience that, that they are beyond what you're saying. So to avoid that, you want to take your, your highest age group and then add three years. Um, believe it or not, your audience on their best days thinks that's what they are. So your high school seniors think that they're as worldwide as 21 year olds and your uh, high school freshmen think that they're as funny as the seniors and the sixth graders think that there's nothing, no difference between them and high schoolers and third graders uh, are demanding the kind of respect that's, that middle schoolers get. And your, your kindergartners think that third graders are truly big kids. So you can speak to people who are three years above where your audience is and you'll hit your target. The third level of video excellence is sound. Notice that sound should be a higher priority to you than video. It's more important than filming outside on that beautiful but windy day. It's more important than filming in your church lobby for context when it's full of people. It's more important than getting that beautiful full body shot where I can't really understand what you're saying because you're too far away. Phones generally get the best sound about, uh, a little less than an arm's length away. Um, they tend to tune out everything that's outside of that range. For computers, your laptop doesn't get very good sound, so I'd suggest trying to film on your phone if you can. If you can avoid shooting outside, I'd recommend it because there are just too many variables. Like the, the birds that are happening right now, the wind that is affecting the microphone, the traffic that seems really distant to me, but that's really present in the mic. Uh, if you can shoot inside and shoot by a window, that would be best. But the number one rule, the number one rule when you're recording audio of yourself by yourself is to play it back. Make sure that it's actually as perfect as you thought it was because the microphone that you're using hears sounds really differently than you do. Uh, you'll want to look out for echo, uh, for car sounds or sirens, uh, for wind and for other people talking. Those are the big ones that people often miss. I'm talking a lot about getting clean audio, but remember that the main purpose is to communicate a message. So if if the sounds are supporting what you're saying, if you're shooting outside and it's windy and you're talking about how windy it is, or if you're talking about busyness and you want to go to Times Square, that's great. Just make sure that I can understand you and it's all serving the content. The fourth level of video excellence is composition and lighting. The question you should ask before you start recording is whether the video needs to be landscape and horizontal like this or portrait and vertical like this. If you don't know, then you should film your video landscape uh, and center yourself up so that if it's cropped, you don't look like this monster face in the middle of the frame. Also, composition. Composition, rule number one for video composition is remembering the rule of thirds. Uh, what that means is you place imaginary horizontal lines on the thirds of the screen. So about a third up is one line, about the next third is the other. Um, and then put your eyes on that third. Our eyes naturally gravitate to those third lines. So as you're framing up, try to get yourself there to, to help subconsciously 
uh, direct attention toward you. Notice that you right now are not below me or looking down on me. Um, if I can turn this around, you were taped to uh, this box uh, that was on top of this chalk box, on top of this tiny little mailing box. I also considered uh, this Tupperware that we bought. Uh, I've got my script here. Um, so you need to MacGyver things to figure out what works best for you. Find a box that works for you. So that's eye level. If you go above, I start looking really small. It looks like you're looking down on me and that doesn't really communicate anything. Um, if you're down below, then you start to feel really small. You start to see a double chin. Uh, it's not flattering and also kind of um, subconsciously makes the viewer feel like they're small. Um, it's, it detracts from your message. Keep it, keep it about your content. Uh, rule number one for video lighting is you want to have more light on you than behind you. Um, you can see that it's a little, little, uh, little dim behind me right now, even though we got this, uh, this bright light going on. But I am very much like front and center, uh, forward lit. Um, however, if you want to take it up another level, um, lighting rather than having lighting directly in front of you. Having lighting at either like 10 o'clock or 2 o'clock is even better. Um, so if your nose is noon, as you can see right here, I'm making shadows on myself. That's my 2 o'clock. Also, that light there is a giant window. Unless you're shooting outside, you'll probably want to be by a window. Otherwise, your video is going to be really grainy. So in this video you're making, your content is king. It's the first and foremost primary thing that everything else should support. So try to choose a background that tells the story. Either tells the story or builds equity with the people that you're speaking to. So the chef's hat thing that's going on up here, my lamp, that's easily avoidable. That's detracting from what I'm saying, so choose something better. The words coming out of your mouth are about two-thirds of the content that you're speaking. For example, how many of you are distracted by my new puppy back here? This is a, this is a, a, a visual medium, so you need to make sure that your whole visual package serves what you're saying. All of these best practices and advice are to help remove obstacles between our content and our audience. So MacGyver what you have to. For kids, your posture and location can help them see you more as a mentor than a school teacher. So get in their space if it makes sense. Sit cross-legged on the floor in your living room or lean against the table where you're talking to them or go to the park and sit on a blanket. Anything that works for your content. So now we're on to the fifth level of excellence. This is the nuts and sprinkles of your Sunday. So the first one that we're gonna talk about is leading lines. What this is, you, you wanna look in your background and if there are any lines, anything like, like this line here is one, this line here, that line there, this line up here, uh, lines in the background, um, those can help lead your audience's eyes. So right now I have all of these lines from these shelves pointed at me and specifically this one here at my eyes. So that helps the, the audience know where to look, just takes away a barrier from your communication, helps them, helps them look at you and, and, and know where to look, not be distracted. Another bonus visual tip is to reverse the direction of your gesturing. Uh, if I go you know, from left to right, for me this feels like a natural progression of time. For you it's the opposite. On camera and on stage, you want to move in the opposite direction. So if I'm telling the story of the gospel, I would say, I was but God and now. That feels like proper progression. Hitchcock actually used to use this, this kind of subliminal uh, mental thing that we have uh, by making villains and people that we should distress walk the other direction. Uh, it feels like it's pushing against the grain. So help your audience follow your lead by gesturing in the direction that makes sense to them. For a little bit more video geometry, there are three main kinds of space that you can create in your backgrounds. Uh, the first one is flat space, as you can see behind me. Um, normally this is created because people are choosing where they want to sit first and, uh, and their couch is against a wall, so that's what's in the background. Uh, it's normally claustrophobic, it's normally pretty boring, and it's rarely dynamic and interesting. Um, so in other words, flat space falls flat. So if you find yourself in a very flat space, it's a really easy solution. Simply rotate your camera. Uh, uh, here we go. Uh, and now you've got deep space. You take all of those, those flat lines and you force a perspective into them so it's kind of shooting off into infinity. Uh, this just makes for a more dynamic and interesting thing to look at. However, there is a third level of space that's, that's even more interesting and it involves a lot of layers. If you're capable, the most interesting space is going to be limited space. And all that is is deep space with layers. So we have all this deep space going on with, with these vanishing lines, uh, but then you have like this doorway here, uh, that doorway back there, another do doorway back here. You have deep space plus these flat interruptions. So over here there would be a piece of furniture. Uh, just makes it more interesting to look at. I know that's an earful, but hopefully that'll help you make excellent and effective ice cream sundaes for your online audience in the future. Thank you for what you do.